Hey everybody, it's Peter again. And uh, this video hopefully is short and sweet. And if you've watched some of my other videos, that might seem like a minor miracle, but I, I, I intend to make it not long and drawn out. Let's see what happens. And so I, I just wanted to kind of update on what's going on in my little world and, and uh, maybe a little bit of a view into the future of what you could expect from uh, me and, and to, to see on this channel. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to start, I'm going to do a test run of, uh, of sorts for the XLS Encore flat packs. Now I should probably back up a little bit. If you haven't been watching my channel, you might wonder what is that? Well, um, for about a year I've been offering the GR Research XLS Encore flat pack as a way to get people uh, into speaker building. My, my interest is about kind of building awareness of the hobby and, and because I have the capability and I can see my way clear to do it uh, from a business perspective, I, I thought I could offer the flat packs as, as a stepping stone. And really that's what it's about for me. And uh, so to that end, uh, that was about a year ago that I started that. And uh, you know, I, just, I, I, think, I think I can say my experiment was successful, at least from my perspective, it, it achieved the things that, that I wanted to achieve. And I hope, and I, I think I can say this safely by corresponding with people and, and seeing their projects and talking about their projects that uh, I, I think um, not only did I accomplish my goals, but I helped other people to reach theirs. And, and to me, that's a win-win that just is unmatchable with any other thing. So I won't go too far down that road. It's <laughs> that may be a subject for uh, another video, but uh, so um, what's going on? I, I, uh, I'm going to start offering, like I said, as a, as a sort of a test run, uh, Baltic birch cabinets. I've had requests to do this and I've been kind of mulling it over, but in, in recent weeks I actually kind of kicked it into gear and got some material, did the, the modifications in my uh, programming and cut some tests and made some prototype cabinets, which you see here and here and refine the process down to the point where I feel real confident offering this as a, a flat pack, an alternative, and it's the same speaker. It's an XLS Encore, but it's, it's cut in a different material, which is Baltic Birch. And this is a Baltic Birch flat pack, what you see here. So there's tops, fronts, backs, sides, all the bracing internally. And, um, oh, and one thing you don't see here is a dowel brace. No, I thought I brought one up. Anyway, there's a dowel brace that goes between, and, and you can look at my other videos to, for an assembly. And then right after this video, I'm going to do, uh, you know what, I'm going to back up just a little bit um, and, and get back to these uh, pricing. So Baltic Birch is considered by many, and I'm not going to go too far down this road, in, in the DIY speaker building world to be a premium product. I could argue both sides of that, but I can tell you that this is plywood, and it, 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 which means it's not MDF. Not everybody loves MDF, not everybody loves plywood. It really is a, a sort of a dead-ended argument to me because it's like saying, are blue cars better or are silver cars better? And uh, it, it just doesn't look that way to, to my point of view. And if, it, if you have a, a, an alliance to one product or the other, well, then, you know, maybe this is of interest to you. But um, suffice to say, it's more expensive. It's about double what MDF is, even the, the high-grade MDF I use. So let's talk about price tag precisely. MDF XLS Encore flat pack is $140. Baltic Birch XLS Encore flat pack is $176. Freight's going to be on top of that. Typically within the USA, um, the continental US, the uh, shipping's going to run 28 to maybe as high as 50 bucks. 
depending on how far away you are from me in Boise, Idaho. So there's kind of the long and the short of that. And there's lots of discussion, I imagine, to be made about why would I spend 36 bucks? And if I would put it to you like this, if you don't see the value in it, don't spend the money. Because <laughs> honestly, it, 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 it's just a rabbit hole. You could spend hours, we could go around and around and around and, and look at the virtues of it. Um, there will be some things that, you know, I should probably point this out. One thing about MDF is the, f everything about it is really, really consistent. It, the, especially the, the platinum, the Ranger board platinum that I use, it's, it's unbelievably consistent in thickness, in flatness, in density. It's just homogeneous in, in almost every way. And that's a good thing when it comes to to speaker building. It doesn't pose any problems. It can be finished a lot of different ways. Um, I have finished and I have seen other people finish right onto MDF. You can just finish it as it is. And it, it you know, a lot of people might look at it and say, oh, that's not something I want to uh, um, do. And in which case you have options. You can, you can do veneer or you can uh, paint or there's any number of things one might do. So the virtues of MDF are its consistency, its density, and its utility in terms of finish ability. And when it comes to Baltic birch, you do have a hardwood face um, and it is birch which is not um, this is going to sound almost snobby of me, but, uh, you know, to me, the, the, the grain in birch is a lot like that of maple. And, and until you get into figured woods, it's kind of mm, muted at best. And uh, so maybe that fits in your, your scheme of things, maybe not. But th what I wanted to point out here is just because that's a hardwood face does not make it a perfect face. And, and what I, I say that is because most Baltic birch is graded in such a way that they allow, and they, they view this as a, a utility product. It, it, is not, it is not designed to be a finished product. Like this is a maple face, USA made plywood, and that face is meant to be finished. This is considered more of a utility thing. If you want to really pretty veneer, you veneer it, just like you would on MDF. And the one thing I want to point out to, two things I want to point out, and that is um, the way that Baltic birch is, is made. So it's a one piece, what they call a rotary cut face. So there are no um, seams of veneer in the, in the face. It's, eh, I won't get into the whole thing about how it's made, but uh, suffice to say that it's, it's, it's a seamless piece from one side of the sheet to the other. But within that seamless piece, there can be defects, and they'll plug those defects. And I'm going to hold that up and point my finger towards it. That little football-shaped thing you, you see there, that's a, that's a plug. And they cut out a little pin knot or something there, and they plugged it. And there's another one right there. And that is... That is how this comes. I mean, it, it is, if you're expecting to a, a perfect face like you might find in something like this, it, it, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I have only seen a few times what, uh, what's called an A face, which is the best grade available on Baltic birch plywood. It, it's just not commonly available, um, to me anyway, through the distributors I use, and, and they have access to everything. And so there's one thing. The other thing I want to talk about is because this is actual hardwood, when you look at MDF, it's, it's ground up wood and all mashed together under high pressure with glue. And, you know, it's not elegant, but it, it serves a purpose in the world. So this is plywood, and that means that there's veneer cores, and the face veneers are hardwood. And birch, Baltic birch, happens to be 
brittle. Uh, it's hard and, and it's kind of like steel. Hardwoods are like steel in that the harder they get, more often than not, the more brittle they get. And so splintering is a concern. And anybody who's ever used Baltic birch, you run your finger along an edge, there's a really good possibility you're going to get a, a nice, sharp little splinter. And it's just the nature of the beast. That's how it machines. That's how, even when sanding on corners and stuff, sometimes you'll get it. So it, it does have some limitations that don't apply to MDF. And another one I'll point out, and these are just random pieces I pulled off of my stack, but and I'm going to point a point that in between my fingers there, you'll see a little splinter. And this is in an area that will be covered up when the speaker is built, so it's not really a concern, but um, you might run into that. So I just don't want to build a false expectation that you can assemble this, route it, and sand it, which is what these are. That's exactly what I did here. I mean, it, it, but you, you may have imperfections, you, and the, the imperfections you'll have to deal with. And uh, I mean, if you want a, a perfect speaker with a, with a really pretty veneer surface, you can do that with veneer on MDF. It does not have to be Baltic birch. I think I've beat that horse enough, so I won't go into a whole bunch more here. So what's next for um, Peter and this channel? And if, if, if any of you watch uh, Ron Bernay and his channel, New Record Day, he uh, said one day that you know, I was talking about something that I was doing, and he said, I, I don't know what Peter's going to do with his channel. And you know what? He's right. Peter doesn't know what he's going to do with his channel. So it sort of unfolds for me. I, I don't really have a target here. Uh, it's YouTube now is becoming kind of a, a deal that you can you can literally build a business on if you can gain an audience and and put out content uh, that people are interested in looking at and become a little bit well known I, you know you can you can generate a little money off of YouTube that's never been my aim I really see it as a platform for for putting information into the world and uh, so <laughs> to that end, um, I, I pay attention to the comments in, in videos and, you know, some of them, they're, they're all over the place. But by and large, you know, people are, are grateful and, and complimentary and um, I'm grateful for that. I mean, it, it's my intention. And, uh, <laughs> but to kind of expand on that a little bit, people have also commented when I'm working in front of the camera and I'm doing something that might be benefit from a, from a closer view, it, the camera where it is right now, which is on a tripod, uh, it doesn't make it easy for me to give the viewer the same view I have. And that could best be accomplished by having somebody with a camera moving around, zooming in on what I'm doing. But in all honesty, folks, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I mean, this isn't really about the video production. production. It's about what it contains in the way of information. That's, that's kind of where my, my focus is now. I, maybe that'll change, but I, I don't have any plans to change it. So, um, all that said, I, I, I was trying to think, well, how can I do this? How can I, how can I give people a better view? And so I landed on the idea of a GoPro camera. A GoPro is small, and I've experimented with it a little bit. Um, I got a headband for it, so I'm <laughs> you may see me in a video wearing a, a GoPro on my forehead, but... Uh, we'll see how that unfolds. It's all new to me. All of video is new to me. I, I, am, I am about as green as you could get unless you were talking about me a year ago, which would be even greener. So 
I, I'm just trying to sort of evolve in a way that makes the most sense and can kind of include people in, in what I'm doing. And uh, so I, I'm going to experiment with that a little bit. There's some other things I want to do with the GoPro. I think it'd be fun to attach it to the router and uh, do kind of movement shots. I used to really enjoy watching that when, uh, when I was first looking at uh, purchasing a CNC router. I would look for those videos on YouTube that showed me the motion. For some reason, it was almost hypnotic to me. I just liked it. So I kind of want to see what I can do in that world. And uh, that will have not a whole lot to do with, with speaker building. So it may, it may go off a little bit and veer more towards general woodworking or something like that. So that that's kind of where I'm going. And by the way, right after this video, I'm going to follow this with when I assembled these cabinets, I was wearing my GoPro on my forehead and I'm sure I looked like a real dork, but you don't see that when you're looking at it through the camera's eyes. So uh, I assembled these and routed them off and sanded them. Uh, GoPro on my forehead. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that in at the end of this and understand it's my first effort. I, I don't claim to know it all and I think it'll be evident that I don't in that video. So you'll see that. So to kind of wrap up, uh, that gives you a direction. Oh, and by the way, I, I am planning on doing uh, a video on veneering a set of these Baltic birch cabinets. Although I'm going to use a little bit different technique than the iron on technique that I've used that I showed in another video. And I hope this doesn't get too far out of the realm of possibilities for folks, but um, I have a, a deal called a vacuum bag, which is a really cool device that you put veneer and substrate into and pull a vacuum into it and it flattens out veneer and presses it on the surface in a remarkable way. It, it, it is truly fun to watch and well, you know what, I, I should back up. It's fun for me to watch, but I could be nerding out about something that other people would find boring. So that's my intent is to uh, take some veneer that I've had in storage and, and uh, veneer a pair of these and kind of go through the process there. So that's kind of next on the agenda. I don't know exactly when that'll come out. I don't really have a timeline. So Ron was right about uh, the direction of this channel. It, it, it kind of goes like that. So I think that's all for today. Um, I hope that wasn't too long-winded as I, my videos typically are, but uh, I just wanted to get some info out there and say thank you to the people who watch this and who uh, to you know find value in it and uh, and encourage you to build speakers. You know, if you lived in my little world, <laughs> everything revolves around that. But anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching if you got this far along and uh, uh, all the stuff about liking and subscribing. Eh, well, whatever. That's it, folks. I just want to encourage you to uh, build speakers and, uh, you know, be nice to your neighbor. Okay? <laughs> See you later.